Let's begin our discussion of manometers here with a simple experiment. Let's say you took a beaker of water and you knew the length here and you knew the radius here. From that you could figure out the area. You took this thing, this beaker, empty beaker, you put it on a scale and there was a here's a bad but there was a reading on this you could push a button on the side and zero the reading out next thing you did you came in here and you filled the thing with water the whole thing is full of water you go back put it on the scale and it measures in pounds Now, you already know that uh, gamma is equal to, well, for water, since we already talked that it was, we already discussed that it was water, um, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. That's nothing more than a weight for a volume. Now, in this particular case, our volume is nothing more than the area times the length. I'm going to avoid using the power squared and just say anything is fine, even a square container, as long for this discussion, as long as the area is not a function of R of L. In other words, area is not a function of L. In other words, if you take a slice down here, the area that you would see here would be the same as the area you saw at top, and so on and so forth. Uh, an example that wouldn't fit that would be a vase that would, say, look like this, in which the area up top is much larger than the area at the bottom. That's not what we're looking at. We're looking at a case in which the area doesn't change. So in that particular case, the area times the length is simply the volume. Uh, now we have our weight, which I called uh, N, but I think I'm going to change that back to a W. So I have 62.4 pounds per cubic foot is equal to the weight for the area times L, because that's nothing more than the volume that went in here. Now someone may ask, and this is something that happens a lot in statics. Um, uh, uh, someone may ask a question. Now, the question is, is what happens if I slice this? Now, you've done this in statics, for example. Say you had a beam simply supported and looks kind of like this. It's a simply supported beam. You can replace these supports with a force. And then what you end up doing is you're doing something crazy. You come in here and you slice the beam right in two. You slice it right there. So you come in here and you slice the beam away. And what do you have to do? You have to put an equivalent load there on it to do this and put a moment. So in your mind, you actually come in here and you slice it, even though you're not physically slicing the beam, you're mentally slicing it. You're basically saying, what type of forces do I need to put right here in order to keep this beam from falling onto the ground if I did do this? So you're not actually doing it, you're supposing that you're doing it. Okay, with that supposing, let's su that same type of supposing, let's take our water. And let's suppose and I'll look at this container like this now without the circle. So I'm looking at it from the side. It's full of water, you have to remember. So it's full of water. And you're going to suppose that you're going to cut the bottom off of the container. Now if you cut the bottom off this container, I'm going to contend that you're going to have to put a uniform pressure on this.
and I'm not drawing a very good of uniform pressure but let's do that so it looks better I'm going to contend that you have to put a uniform pressure on the bottom in order to hold it up now the question is what is that uniform pressure let's look at this equation right quick and we have a weight and an area here that looks an awful lot like a uh, pressure so I'm going to contend that it is the pressure and I'll replace this with gamma because that is the gamma of a fluid gamma times the length so what this equation says and in most textbooks they represent it as an H or a small h they say that whatever the height of this thing is h I'll say for the moment the pressure at that depth if you just took a slice there would be equal to that and that is in fact what you find out now with that let's take a case of what not to do here's a typical example let's say somebody had a swimming pool here you are standing on the side of the swimming pool here you find a garden hose so you take the end of the thing and stick it to your mouth and jump in the swimming pool don't do this this is not a this is not a smart idea here's why you get down to the bottom of the swimming pool and to make my calculations easier let's just say it's 20 foot deep here you are at the bottom of the swimming pool here's your lungs at the bottom of the swimming pool here's your eyes bugging out there's your hat so the garden hose is connected through your mouth and has a direct connection right down to your lungs so here's your garden hose on the tip end of this is 14.7 psi roughly so that means the pressure in here is about 14.7 psi but sitting on top of you you got 20 foot of water so the pressure there is 62.4 times 20 roughly let's just say that just to make my life easier it's 60 so the say you went and dove, dove in some light water not really that possible but just uh, we're gonna uh, do this just to make my life a little bit easier now it's 1200 pounds per square foot if you look at your chest and I would contend it's about a square foot exposed on the on your chest so your lungs may have about a foot squared exposure to the surface if you did that would be as if I don't know say there are 200 pound of your buddies you find six 200 pounds buddies to sit right on your chest tell me what that result would feel like so whatever you do in your life don't do this that's why when you get in dealing with uh, people who scuba dive they have a tank with compressed air in there and somewhere on the back there's a regulator I guess that's the way you spell regulator and it supplies the pressure in your lungs and it should approximately match the pressure of the outside water so there your your lungs are balanced I guess you could say pressure inside your lungs equal to the pressure outside your lungs pretty much what happens when you're walking around in a normal day